windy day. I've just got off the um, east of Sheffield to Chatsworth, number 218 bus. I'm at a place called Aula Bar. It's high above there, the hills on the western side of Sheffield. It's about eight miles from the town centre. I only left home about uh, half an hour ago. 15 minute bus ride and I'm, I'm up here. We're about a thousand feet up, not that high, but normally you can get great views over the city. I'm going to set off walking now. I've only got about probably 20 minutes road walking, then about half an hour across, across the moors to my chosen campsite. I wrecked it about two or three weeks ago and it was lovely and sunny. Forecast for tonight is uh, very windy and a lot of rain, so it should be a fun camp. So I'm going to set off up the road and I'll torch you when we start crossing the moors. Speak to you in a bit. We're crossing the uh, open moorland now. Not far to go, um, probably about half an hour's walking. We're in November now and you can feel the changing weather. And obviously we've got the, the darker nights, so not so much daylight now. Now on this camp, I have not brought my trusted Hilleberg Sulu. I brought a different tent, it's uh, the same damn one. I bought it about two years ago. I've only used it once. It's a Crux Storm Tent. It's more of a, a winter mountain tent, uh, but it's built like a bomb. Built like a bomb it is. It's just something different to try. I just like trying different tents. So, Hopefully, if the, the weather stays fine, which I don't think it will, I'll be able to uh, set the tent up, show you around it and that. It's ideal for a camp like this where I'm not much walking. It does weigh about six pounds, so it is a little bit heavy for carrying a long way. But for, I don't know, a winter camp where you need a little bit extra room and you've not got to carry it far it's ideal but we'll see how we go with it just having to cut across the home heather now it's certainly hard work now we've got a bog to go through And finally we get here, this is the spot I'm going to camp, not that you'll see anything because uh, I think it's going to rain soon, um, either that or it's low cloud. I was going to tell you about this uh, new tent I've got. It's not new, it's second hand. It's a Crux Storm, sort of like a mountain tent. Conditions are so bad, it's fine rain, 20, 30 mile an hour winds. I've even had to take my hat off and wrap it around the camera to protect the camera. So I'm just gonna get on, get the tent set up, and I'll have to tell you about it later.
on too bad that. Um, I was quite pleased with myself. I had visions of it uh, disappearing over Sheffield. So it's just a matter of getting the uh, guy ropes in. Uh, I think there's only about six of them, so that's the easy bit. All settled in, um, I thought that went up quite well. It is horrendous out there. About 25 mile an hour winds and uh, driving rain. I'm glad I'm inside here. Now you might wonder why I ever bought another tent. I just like tents. Can't beat the Sulu. That's uh, my normal tent, Hillyburg Sulu. Uh, so easy to put up. And the one good thing about it, you put the fly and the inner up in one go. So you, you're not in a situation like this where you've got the inner up and it's getting wet. So Sulu, that is my main tent. That is absolutely fantastic tent. So you may wonder why have I bought this. I just like tents. I just fancied something different really. I saw it advertised on eBay. It's a Crook Storm. Um, it was about... New price about 550 I think and this was about 280 quid so I thought I'll have it. I bought it about two years ago. Got a slight tear in the fly sheet in the door, it's not gonna hurt anything. I have looked on the crooks website and they don't seem to be producing them now, so I was probably lucky to get it. So that was a couple of years ago and I never really used it. I carried on using my Sulu. And then in uh September I went on our annual fishing trip with the lads I know from work I've done it for 25 years there is a slight difference 25 years ago we fished from dawn till dusk and then sat inside a tent drank a few tins of beer and played cards when we go now we don't fish we don't even take any fishing tackle it's called the fishing trip but all we do is go around Newark drinking. So I thought, yes, I'll take my Crook Storm um, and I thought I'll erect it in the dark when we get back, having been around Newark for 10 hours. So 10 hours, pint an hour, we'd had a few. So the other lads all got in the tents or the motorhomes or various other things they brought with them. I experienced camper, I thought I'll have this tent up in no time. I got the inner up straight away. Great, nothing to it. It was calm, a bit of flood lighting, nice evening. The outer I laid that on, I got one end done. It won't match up the other side. Realised I've got it the wrong way round. So I swizzled it all round, clipped it on, got all four ends on this time. But I couldn't get the sides clipped on. All the other lads, I could hear them snoring. They were all asleep, they now. And then I realised I got the fly inside out as well. So I flipped it over. Again, all went on then. And, and I, I got it got it on. So it took me about 45 minutes. But um, it was uh, a good learning uh Bit of practice, bit of practice. So I didn't think I did too bad today in the conditions. I'll try and show you around. Um, it's it's not so easy because um, I can't get out, go outside because the weather's too bad. But it is similar to I once had a Terra Nova Quasar. That was a fantastic tent, um, solid as anything, but it weighed nine pound in weight. This is not a half weight, it's about six pound in weight. So if I'm, if I'm not going far, say I can catch a bus, a bit of driving, I don't have to carry it far. And I'm thinking for winter, when you've got a load of extra gear, your gear's covered in rain or snow, and you need that little bit more room inside. So I'm thinking for those conditions. The way, the way the rain is hitting this, this is probably the ideal situation, because I ain't going out there everything will be from inside the tent tonight so like i say i'll i'll try and show you around now
That's looking at the front of the tent. Um, got like quite a reasonable porch area. Got my stove and that set up there ready for cooking a meal. Just have to open the doors a little bit. We've got pockets either side. Managed to store quite a bit of gear there. And like I've got my ex bed, I'm sleeping this side. And then the other side, I've quite a lot of room to store my rucksack. Um, a little bit of storage in the roof. But it's that room I like. I'm just gonna swing the camera around. So that's looking at the back of the tent. Again, quite a bit of room uh, at the side of my ex bed. And then there's a. Uh, well, it's blowing out there. There's like a zipped door to a storage area at the back. Uh, I've got my boots and a, a bit of wet gear in there. So yeah, I've got quite a bit of room. Well, that weather sounds horrendous now. I've, uh, I think the wind's increasing and uh, the rain's getting heavier because sometimes uh, it's so loud with it beating on the fly sheet. But it's not flapping. I've got to admit, my Sulu, I think it's uh, the vent on top. Sometimes I've probably not got it tight enough and that does flap a bit. This isn't flapping at all. It's, uh, it feels very solid and uh, although it's windy, nothing's flapping. Time to get the kettle on, have a quick drink. Got me stove set up in the porch. It suddenly stopped raining. One minute it was uh, battering on the fly sheet like anything. And then it suddenly stopped and that's the view I've got. I can actually see right down into Sheffield Town Centre. That's uh, the town centre. Those red lights are on top of cranes where they're doing some new building work. So yeah, hopefully we'll get some better views uh, when it clears. Might be tomorrow that. Right, I've had my drink. It was actually soup, not coffee. Uh, soup I had. So, for a main course, well, what I've got here is, it's basically my own dehydrated sort of stew with pasta. I'd have liked it with mashed potatoes, but seemed too messy that. Pasta seemed the easy way to go. So, I'll just put up on the screen the fresh ingredients I used to make this. These are the ingredients I used to make the uh, this stew. It's 500 grams of minced green beans, a couple of carrots, it's a swede, a couple of onions, some frozen peas. There's a mixed herb and a stock cube. And in the bag, that's actually some uh, pasta tubes which I dehydrated 18 months ago and they've been in the fridge. So I'll mix them in with the main meal when I've dehydrated it all. And then that should provide a one pot meal. I'm working on two portions, but I might stretch it to three. I'll see how it uh, looks when it's in the pan. So those fresh ingredients are cooked up, then dehydrated it all. And it's actually made three meals. And, th and this is one of them. I've even wrote on how much water, so I must be getting better. So I need 600 millilitres of water in there. So I'm going to put the, the meal straight into that pot first. So the plan is, um, we leave this to soak. It can stand there and soak for about 10 minutes. I'm then going to bring it to the boil a couple of minutes in the pot cosy, leave it for 10 minutes. 
So that should be it. That will be T done. So yeah, that's having a minute and uh, then it'll go in the pot cosy. It is starting to go dark. I can see the lights of Sheffield in the, the distance. That's it uh, quite early at this time of the year. I think we'll call that enough. So that's my pot cosy. This is always the awkward bit. Somebody did suggest I cut a slot in there for the handles. Good idea, I just have never got around to it. So that goes in there, the lid goes on. And we'll leave that for 10 minutes and dinner is served. As easy as that. That tastes okay. I think I might have overdone the cayenne pa uh, pepper. I remember shaking and thinking, oh, there's too much there. Anyway, it should keep me warm in the night. So I'm going to get on, eat this as my main meal. And I've just got some chocolate, various things for a sweet. And hopefully, well, although it has gone pretty dark now, I'll come back to you in a bit and we'll see if we can get some photographs of uh, Sheffield at night. So I'll see you in a bit. Just looking through the, the tent door now it's gone dark. You can see the glow from the lights of the city of Sheffield. Uh, that's about eight miles away that. This is a closer view of the city. The main um, city centre is just to the left of the, the photo, that's uh, where the concentration of lights is. With this photo, I zoomed in a bit and did a longer exposure. The three red lights are on cranes working in the city centre. That's, like I say, about eight miles away. Just above that you can see a uh, a power station, the, the cooling towers, that is in fact Drax power station and that's 35 miles away. I did not see the power station initially but the long exposure revealed it uh, in the distance when, uh, when I put it on the computer. Well, I think I'll sit and look at the view a bit longer and perhaps have another drink then I'm gonna try and get some sleep so I'll uh, I'll talk to you in the morning good morning this is my breakfast don't it look nice now just to show you things don't always go right I filmed the cooking of this breakfast in great detail and then when I got home, I put it on the computer to find out he was all out of focus. Couldn't even show it yet. I then realised that while doing the night photography, I'd been using manual focus. And in the morning, I switched the camera on and I never put the autofocus back on. So I recorded 10 minutes of footage all out of focus. Luckily, I took this picture with my phone to let people know what a great breakfast I was about to eat. So, I have got some record of my breakfast. Thought I'd uh, try a few pictures of the town centre and that again. It's pretty clear, so you can see quite a way. I'm taking them in from inside the tank because it's pretty sheltered there. This first picture, if you can make out the white roof in the centre of the picture, that's actually home base. And just behind it there's a quarry. Well when I did my urban camp um, a couple of months ago, I camped on top of that quarry. That's about four or five miles away. This picture here 
Sancho's City College, that's at the bottom of Granville Road in the town, uh, Sheffield itself. Top right, you can see some sort of chimneys, that's actually the steelworks at Aldwark, which is in Rotherham. Another power station, um, this is in fact Eggborough power station and again about 35 miles away. Again the town centre in daylight, that's with the Drax power station in the distance. If you look carefully at the town centre, just to the left of the centre of the picture there's the three cranes with the, the red lights on and in between there you might be able to pick out the town hall. If I had a better lens you could see the clock on there and read the time and that's eight miles away. This is uh, zoomed in onto Drax power station uh, again. Like I mentioned earlier it's actually above the M62 between Ghoul and Selby. Another power station here, this is Cotton uh, or Cotton power station. Again, must be 35 miles away, and that one's near Retford in uh, Nottinghamshire. Nice to get out of the wind for a few seconds. 
blowing a gale out there. What a fantastic place to camp. I've lived in Sheffield all my life. I've never camped up here before. It shows you if you search round all the fantastic places you can find. From here, I'm going to head down to uh, Totley and catch a bus home. Should be at home in no time. And then I'll get this lot up on the computer screen and see what it's worked out like. I find that an exciting part, especially the still photographs. Uh, sometimes you look at them and you think, oh dear, that's not very good that. Other times you think, wow, what a fantastic shot. So I look forward to that part. Also, I'd like to thank you for all your comments. They are much appreciated. Um, I do sometimes take a while answering them, especially if I've put a new movie on or I've been away. But I will answer all your comments uh, eventually. But I do appreciate them. Uh, thank you very much for those. So, I'll leave you with a view that I'm looking at. And I will see you on the next Camp, Explore, Vivi, who knows? But I'll see you on the next one. Bye then.